We're just gonna, as you see in our church, we have really one goal and one purpose in mind. We, all of us from very beginning, from the intro to the prayers, to, uh, to every word that we have, we talk about the vision of the church. We talk about what God has in store for us and where and what we're going for. And nothing less to what God has in store for us. Amen. And so I, wanna, I wanted to remind you again about the vision of our church. Is that our vision is to see many, many, many people uh, get saved. To be saved, be healed and, and, uh, and be delivered. We want to see our city is worthy of God's manifestation, of God's presence and God's anointing in, in this place. Amen. Our city deserves a, to have a great, a great church. Church that will not only be a church but church that will be a host for presence of God. And like the pastor said already that there's a difference between a church and between the presence of God. In many, many times people coming in the church mistaken and many times even churches themselves mistaken the, those two things. And we want to be the church to really bring the presence of God, bring the manifest presence of God. Will people get saved first of all because there is no greater miracle than salvation of one soul. People will be healed, people will be delivered and people will be blessed in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. And so um but the way we're going to get there, the way we're going to get to that vision, the way we're going to see masses come to Jesus, the way we're going to see stadiums filled with people worshiping God and God's presence being manifest is that's going to come to pass through prayer. Nothing great starts without prayer. Everything great that started, every great revival, every great move of God, every great answer that has, that people received in their lifetime came through prayer and came through much prayer came through like pastor was talking about through determination and that that, that determination comes through prayer in our church we have a vision and we greatly desire we greatly want to see a 24 hour 24 7 prayer chain going in our church that every second every minute of the day without ceasing like the bible says pray without ceasing that our church will be a church that will pray that will constantly we have people praying praying for revival praying for god's move praying for god's answers to come we want to see a prayer mountain in our church we want to see where there's going to be a place where we people can go we can where they can take time off of work they can take time to go and spend time in prayer and fasting and praying praying for their needs praying for the city praying for whatever God puts on their hearts so that we will see that we will have a prayer mountain amen and we will see that to pass we will see that come to pass we are surrounded and like pastor was saying is that before you begin to have a vision for life because before you begin to be persistent to achieve the goal you must be exposed and by the grace of God in our church and by the grace in our life that God has we've been exposed to many great ministries and one of them that you just saw in the video where God greatly moves by his spirit healing people setting people free and people receiving salvations and we want to be nothing short of what God has in store for us as a church we want to be nothing short as a church of what the church looked like uh, in the first days apostolic church we want to be nothing short of what God is doing in the church today so that it will happen in our church as well which is salvation of souls healing deliverance and blessings in Jesus name amen church and so in order to have determination and in order to have that goal so that we can achieve we must be exposed and God by his grace and mercy has given us the exposure through multiple ministries for example ministry of prophet T.B. Joshua, ministry of Dr. Yon Gucho, ministry of uh, Kesh Luna or ministry of Pastor Mantan in Kiev that we're closely connected and God gave us grace to be closely connected to one of the to to each of those ministries and to follow and to follow their example and if you if you are um, trying to achieve as an, as an athlete for example for example as an athlete you're trying to achieve certain height certain um, rank or you're trying to achieve certain thing in your life you have to be exposed to the people that achieved it and follow their lifestyle am i correct if you are an athlete that's trying to achieve and become uh and achieve a reward achieve a, a medal on olympics 
you need to follow the lifestyle of the people in the past or current that achieved those Olympic medals. You have to follow their diet, their schedule and the way things go, the, the, way, the way they do things and the way they exercise so that you can have a chance of achieving what they achieved, right? And looking at all those ministries that we connected and looking at the first church in the Bible and Jesus being as a role model, we see that prayer was a cornerstone for their success. Prayer was something that they did without ceasing. Something they do, the ministries that we follow, do a lot and we see the results produced from it. And so um, we see in uh, particularly a church um, in South Korea it's actually pretty much every church not pretty much every church in South Korea doesn't matter if they're Presbyterian they're Baptist they're charismatic they're Foursquare or if they're Pentecostal every church in Korea has their own prayer mountain and they have their own prayer morning services and every single morning starting from four o'clock doors open and they would have uh, every hour they would take shifts from four to some seven to nine they would take every hour a new shift and church of thousands will be packed for prayer and when they begin their services and you think if we do a lot of praying in church uh, you should see how much praying they do every service they start with much prayer in the middle of the service they have much prayer and they end with much prayer on top of that they have prayer mountains where 24 7 there is prayer going on and people from the church and from all around the world they go and pray and that's why we see the revival that's been going on in South Korea that reflected on their economy reflected on their health reflected on the overall um, well-being of a country and, a per, and, and, and each individual person's life and we see that God is using and particularly the church that we follow really closely, Church of Dr. Yung Gi Cho, um, we see how God is moving in salvations of people. 10,000 people get saved every single month in that church. That church is over 1 million members and that's just one main church. We're not talking about all the churches around that he released that with the close vicinity that are all over 100, 200, 300, 500,000 member church and this is all possible because of prayer so I want to take time and just to talk a little bit about prayer and to encourage us uh, towards towards the vision that we have to encourage us towards prayer so that we can see things come to pass in our life like I already said that Jesus is our model for prayer and and Jesus he is the one that models us prayer and how to pray and in the life of Jesus if you begin to read and study his life you'll see that Jesus had morning prayers every single morning or I don't know every every single morning I only assume that it was every single morning but Bible we clearly see that Jesus spent mornings praying we also see in the Bible that Jesus spent many nights praying that's why we get that's why we do Friday night prayers except that Jesus had it all night we only have a couple hours but we'll get there um, so our ultimate model is Jesus and how he prayed you know I um, uh, I'll tell you a little bit background of, uh, of our pastor um, and the, the, the kind of background he comes from that just a little bit that I know and uh, our pastor and uh, his family he uh, he grew up in a very tough times actually they uh, they grew up in a communistic country where being a Christian was forbidden and if they catch you praying if they catch you having a Bible you would go to 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 jail for many many years as a matter of fact my great grandpa was jailed and then eventually was killed because he was a Christian and he had a Bible and so the church in their times did not actually have much access to the Bible the Bible were very scarce people would write things down and copy things in their notebooks so they can have a little bit some portion of a Bible maybe a chapter or maybe even down to some verses but one thing that that church could do that church could pray and I remember uh, a pastor sharing multiple occasions the prayer meetings that they used to have and even though they didn't have much knowledge of the Bible but they knew how to be led by the Holy Spirit that they knew how to get into the presence of God and they saw many many miracles salvations they saw how God miraculously provided for them how God did miracles healings 
and gave word of word word of uh, prophecy word of wisdom and word of knowledge in their meetings people would get saved and today we have on the opposite today we have in many churches we have a lot of word we have a lot of teaching we have a lot of knowledge of the bible but yet there is no power to live out what God has given us to live out the purpose that he has for us there is no power to um, heal sickness there's no power to cast out demons and church became just a routine even though we have a lot of word and we see that we need to have one and the other it's like two legs walking you need to have one and the other if you want to progress and move forward you need to have the word and you need to have a prayer on average um, statistics says a pastor in America prays uh, up to 30 minutes a day that's maybe three hours up to three hours uh, a week and he and they said to prepare it takes them about 15 to 25 hours to prepare for one week's message and so that's why we can see the results that we see today in American churches uh, in in America not just American churches it's a uh, it's Russian churches Ukrainian churches American churches any church where there is no prayer where there's lack of prayer there will be lack of power of God and so um, we have to understand that Satan is against prayer because if he can stop prayer he can stop the answers of God Satan can't stop God from answering our prayer. God is infinitely more powerful, infinitely more uh, stronger than Satan. Satan is no match to him. God spoke a word and he cast him down from heavens. He didn't, it didn't require an effort from God to defeat the Satan. Satan is no match to God. So when God's people pray, God comes to their aid and he helps but when God's people don't pray God does not answer and so Satan's goal and task is to stop us from praying as, as soon as we recognize this truth as soon as we receive this revelation we will be praying much more because we'll realize how much we depend on God and how much uh, we depends on how that we pray and that we seek the face of God that's why in the story of Daniel when Daniel would pray every single day, he'd open his window towards Jerusalem and every single day he prayed. Uh, people just, some of those, some of the people couldn't stand that and they went to the lengths to have him killed. But we know that it wasn't just the people that were bothered by Daniel's prayer. But we know that it was Satan and the spirit behind that kingdom that, that knew that if, he's, if Daniel's going to continue to pray, the stronghold in the country will be broken. And so we have to recognize that the number one enemy of prayer is Satan. If he can stop the church from praying, if he can stop you from praying, he can stop your life from progressing and moving forward. Um, prayer is what you learn is not what you're born with. Because disciples came to Jesus and they asked Jesus, Jesus teach us how to pray. You say maybe I'm not a great prayer warrior. You know I see you guys praying here on the stage. You say you have so much to say. You're so passionate and you, you're doing all those things. Well you have to understand that you're not born with the ability to pray. You develop the ability to pray. I have a very uh, very small child. Uh, she's, five, she's five and a half months old and she is trying to communicate with us but she doesn't know how so she does it any way she can. She does by screaming, by yelling, she's tried, she does it by making all kinds of noises and they're cute and they're all nice and they're uh, adorable at five months old but when she hits a year old, two years old, five years old you expect them to progress in their speech and their communication and ability to communicate with you, right? When a, when, a, when, a, when a child is 10 years old and is still making five year old five month old noises there is something that is there is wrong something something not right with the child and same thing when we get saved it's okay not to know how to pray but our prayer needs to be just like disciples came to Jesus say Lord teach us how to pray that's why in our church we continuously constantly pray for the spirit of prayer to come upon us so that we will know how to pray. Bible says the Holy Spirit gives us utterances to pray. When we grow with the Holy Spirit, when we grow in a relationship with the Holy Spirit, He will teach us how to pray. 
He will give us the answers to pray. He will teach us how to pray according to the will of God. Amen. So we're not born knowing how to pray. But we'll learn how to pray. So if you don't know how to pray. Ask Holy Spirit to teach you how to pray. And pay attention and learn from the people. From your leaders, from the pastors. How to pray. Amen. Jesus taught his disciples. We can teach our disciples how to pray. One thing you have to remember about prayer that a prayer cannot be delegated. There's many things in your life that you can delegate but praying is not one of them. Just like you can't delegate somebody to eat for you. Say well honey you know I'm too busy. I'm kind of late to work. Let me go to work. You eat breakfast for me and lunch since I'm going to be busy at lunch and uh, that's going to be you know the, you can't do that. It's foolish. We understand that it's common sense to us. We can delegate many other things. We can delegate chores, uh, especially if you're kids and you can you have a free labor. Hopefully they obey. Um, but you can't delegate prayer. And so we have to understand that pastor can't pray for us. We've developed, uh, especially um, the, the mo modern churches in, in America, they've developed this whole thing, pastor prays and everybody bows their heads and listens. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, pastor can't eat for you, spiritually speaking. You have to open up your mouth and pray for yourself. And so you have to, pastor can't pray for you. And uh, you just come for Sunday service or Wednesday service and expect to grow spiritually. Prayer cannot be delegated. You have to pray yourselves. That's why we have every morning we'd open our doors some, uh, as early as four o'clock in the morning. You can come here if you can't do it at home. If you're not, if you, if you're not disciplined enough, come here and pray and feed your spiritual man. Pray because nobody else can do it for you. <clears throat> prayer <clears throat> is like a two-sided coin. <clears throat> and I'm just going to go into some practical things about prayer and um, encourage us to pray <coughs> prayer is like a two-sided coin it has to go in hand together first part of the coin <coughs> is prayer of fellowship and second of all we have to have task-oriented prayer Can we get some water? <coughs> write this down prayer is a spiritual dialogue between God and man Prayer is a spiritual dialogue between God and man. So first of all, <clears throat> prayer is a fellowship. You have to understand that we are in relationship with God. <clears throat> and we need to have a communion or a fellowship with Him. God is love and, le and love has an inborn desire. It has an inborn need for fellowship. It has a vacuum for fellowship that's why God does have a need and his need is to fellowship with you we see that in uh, the garden of Eden God was fellowship fellowship uh, fellowshipping with Adam and Eve every evening he came and they fellowship like man to man so you have to understand that we are in relationship with God. Just like if you are in a romantic relationship with somebody, you want to, it draws you, you desire to be with that person. You desire to share feelings with that person. You desire to share how your day went and even as far as what you ate for lunch. <clears throat> okay. And so does God. He created us in his image and his likeness and God desires to have a fellowship with us. So first part of prayer we need to have fellowship with God Bible calls us in 2nd Corinthians 13 14 that God is um, made the grace of the Lord Jesus the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you <clears throat> we need to have fellowship with God we need to have communion with God second of all when we fellowship with God we need to first of all what, what the fellowship contains first of all we welcome him we recognize him every person in a relationship likes to be recognized they don't like to be ignored I know even sometimes uh, when I come home and you know I spend time uh, I spent uh, 
time at home with my wife but I'm busy doing my I'm busy doing my things my chores I'm busy doing other stuff she would sometimes would say well you're you're not spending time with me no you know and you'd be like well how are you not spending time with her you're with her it's because every person has a need to be recognized every person has a need to be welcomed and every person has a need to be noticed first thing in our prayer with fellowship we need to recognize God when you can we need to notice him and need to give him proper greetings and proper welcome in our life second thing in our prayer uh, prayer of fellowship has to contain praise worship and thanksgiving this is a time when we just worship God for who he is we thank God for what he's done in our life for what he's doing it's a time when we praise him when we give him glory Bible says everything that has breath praise the Lord third thing that in our prayer and a prayer of fellowship needs to contain is repentance of sin we need to ask God to forgive us of our sins that's why we need to pray daily so that we can constantly and we every single day we have to cleanse ourselves by the blood of Jesus cleanse ourselves from every sin that we did intentionally and unintentionally so that we can make sure that we always are in the right standing with God and so our prayer of fellowship has to contain the time when we ask God to wash us of our sin and fourthly is time of meditation and confessing confession of God's word this what con this is what contains in a prayer of um, fellowship with God and I hope you are writing because this will help you to develop a prayer walk with God because a lot of times especially new people that are just started coming to church or new leaders they ask us well how do I pray well I'm just giving you right now a step practical steps of how you pray in your prayer life uh, so firstly you start by fellowshipping and these are the four things that fellowship contains it can contain more but these are the basic ones prayer of welcoming him recognizing God praise worship and thanksgiving repentance of sin meditation and confession of God's word we have to understand especially for those of us that are in the ministry those of us that are leaders here in this uh, in this place we have to understand that prayer of fellowship and ministry unto God comes before any other ministry that we do unto people. In the Bible we read that Paul and Barnabas, they ministered unto the Lord and then Holy Spirit said, separate them for the ministry. So we have to, as a church, learn how to minister to God in fellowship and communion with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Second prayer, second um, second part of our prayer has to be a task oriented prayer a lot of times people get through the first part of the prayer the fellowship with the holy spirit they recognize god they they ask god to forgive them of their sins they repent they uh, give god praise they thank god and and they get into the presence of god they go through this part and they are done with praying but this is like one hopping on one leg you're not gonna go far you have to have a second part of your prayer which is a task-oriented prayer and a task-oriented prayer consists of two things is prayers of petition and a prayer of warfare we see in the story of Daniel that Daniel begins to he recognized by the books by the by the prophecies that the time of slavery of 70 years of in Babylonian kingdom has come to an end and but Israel was still in captivity and so he began to pray and ask God so that God will release Israel and, and the nation of Israel so that God will release them from the captivity and we see from the story of Daniel that he prayed for 21 days until he received an answer from God so we see that there has to be in our prayers we have to have an a task oriented prayer if we want to see progress in our life if we want to see um <clears throat> If we want to see progress in our home groups as home group leaders, if we want to see growth in our church, we have to have a task oriented prayer, which is asking God and bringing to God petitions. Bible, uh, Apostle Paul in many of his writings says, thank God uh, for, for the people and pray for them. Pray for them. We have to pray our petitions before God. We have to pray for people. We have to pray for the goals and the visions for the project that God gives us. The prayers that we don't pray would be the prayers that are not answered. God is awaiting for our prayers. In Revelations 5, 8, it says that uh, when, and when he took up the scroll and four living beings and 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each one 
had a harp and they held a golden bowl filled with incense which were the prayers of God's people. God collects our prayers in a vessel and when those prayers come to its fullness he pours out those prayers he answers those prayers but if we do not pray the prayers God will have nothing to pour out he'll have no prayers to answer Jesus said you do not have because you do not ask and in a in a parable of uh, in Luke chapter 18 of the widow we see that widow was consistently crying out to the unrighteous judge asking him for help and he eventually helped her and Jesus by this showed us an example of prayer said that how much more if you're going to ask your heavenly father that he will give it to you the things that you ask for we as a church we must understand this principle and this truth about prayer that if we don't pray we will not see growth in our personal life we will not see prayers answered we will not see uh, God bringing revival and the spirit of God will not move in our church as we see it as we want to see it amen Um, second thing prayer uh, task oriented prayer has to contain a prayer of warfare Jesus said that you cannot enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods without first binding him we need to we need to have a time in a prayer when we wage warfare when we fight against powers principalities and the things uh that in the atmosphere that's what uh, in Ephesians chapter 6 uh, verse 12 Apostle Paul writes our, our fight is not against flesh and blood and like pastor was showing this video clip you've seen the people that were just normally behaving normally in a prayer line and as soon as uh, Apostle John Chi came and touched them and prayed for them all of a sudden the spirit began to manifest inside of them and when the spirit was cast out the people were free and they received a healing deliverance or whatever that the need was uh, in them uh, before God we have to understand that without prayer for deliverance without spiritual warfare the, there is no revival Dr. Yon Gucho explains um, his story how he started his, one of his churches um, I think I believe is the first church in um, in this in this one village and he was praying and fasting and he was inviting people he was witnessing and as much as he tried he had he saw very little people come to Jesus he was very frustrated and he is very <clears throat> he was asking God what's going on what's happening and at one time he was praying a lot and one time he fell into in, into a trance or a vision it, it was it was a dream that he explains and in his dream he saw a snake crawl in to his church it was a snake but in a dream that snake had a human head and he began to fight and wrestle and the snake was wrapping around him trying to choke him and trying to kill him and he is he was wrestling for hours and hours and he's explaining that he was he was exhausted in a dream the only thing he could do is whisper the name of Jesus and he was as he was as he whispered the name of Jesus he began to feel strength come and fill him he began to feel like that snake began to lose power and he continued to cry out the name of Jesus eventually he shook the snake off of him he he stomped on it he broke it he broke the he, he broke the head of the snake and he woke up after that after the dream and he received the revelation that that snake in a dream was the spirit that was hanging over that city over that village and that he received a victory the moment after that he began to see salvations healings and deliverance in his city in his uh in his region and his church rapidly grew and he began to see healings deliverances and salvations in that city and this is you say well you know that's just those Asian countries and the, it's it's there you know African Asian countries it's they always have the spiritual side to them but there is a church in, in Miami Florida and pastor uh, Guillermo Maldano his church is right now probably probably from anywhere 18 to 25,000 people and he said for years and years he's been praying for God to move in his church for his church to grow his church was very small constantly problems after problems um, no spiritual manifestations no healings and no deliverance and the, and the worst part of all church was not growing people are not getting saved and he's praying and praying and praying at one time God gave him a relation of deliverance and he began to move in a power of deliverance first of all 
uh, all of his leadership team got delivered and after his leadership time got delivered God began to move even further where he began to see deliverance in his church and after that that came an exponential growth in salvations and healings and even raising of the dead that they have documented um, at least of a dozen um, instances where people got in some sort of incidents accidents where they died or they were in a scene where somebody died or where members of his church prayed for people and they were risen from dead uh, from dead where doctors that go to church will they declare a person dead they would go into them will go into the morgue what God will, will put a, a, a prompting on their heart and I think we actually saw one of those videos not too long ago when he w uh, and he went back back into the place where they already put him to take him to the morgue and he commanded in the name of Jesus for a person to get up and a person that was already dead for hours and hours got up and walked out of the place without any medications without any many medical device without any sort of help when he got checked out the person had a clean bill of health and so that's the power of a spiritual warfare and so we as a church every time we pray we have to have in our prayer time where we wage spiritual warfare where we wage spiritual warfare in your personal life and in the life of the church so practical a couple practical things and I'm gonna I'm not gonna I'm, I'm gonna finish it up um, we have every every single day from Monday through Friday from four o'clock the doors are open pastors here uh, leaders are here praying come out and pray if you're nearby this area before you go to work spend an hour with, with Jesus spend an hour of fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit an hour of praying and interceding so that God will begin to do great and mighty things we have Friday night prayers starting at nine o'clock 9, 9 p.m come out pray let us pray let us see our city come to know Jesus Christ let us see people saved healed and delivered every single um, Sunday at 9 15 before church service let's we have a we have a prayer here going on till 9 45 come out and pray I want to see every single home group leader at 9 15 at morning prayer and Sunday morning prayer your Sundays are not here to relax you're not your Sunday is not here just to come and do a check mark your Sundays is here so that you can come here early in the morning break the atmosphere break through so uh, in, in the atmosphere so that when people come they can come and receive here so come out and let's pray as you see that we're gonna continue to grow in, uh, in prayer we're gonna we are praying we're gonna pray more and we're gonna pray even more and each person in our, in, in our church we will grow in prayer because prayer opens the doors of heaven and prayer opens the doors for uh for God's presence to come in our life amen, amen. Jesus prayed in the mornings so it's important that we come out and pray in the mornings mornings are the best time to pray because our mind is like a clean canvas that God can begin to write on it and set our day, our day and direction for our day. Amen. So right now as we're gonna go into a son of, uh, of worship we're gonna pray afterwards. We're gonna pray that the spirit of prayer will come upon us. Will come upon our church that every single morning that every single day we will spend time in prayer. We will spend time growing in God. We will spend time we will you have to understand that the time of prayer is not a time wasted it's time invested when you pray you don't waste your time it's not the time that you just feel good it's the time where you do spiritual warfare it's a time where you do spiritual things it's a time when you build yourself Bible says where you build your future that you desire it's the time when we break the stronghold of the enemy over our city and we see people saved uh, before I finish this I just want to demonstrate you with this example it's very personal to me the power of prayer because we believe in praying for people we believe in praying for our situations we believe in praying for for people to be saved and and this example actually um, comes from our family um, and at a time when my mom got saved she was she was very young she was a teen then her then her mom got then her mom got saved and uh, her grand uh, my grandpa her dad was very much against um, 
any sort of religion he was a atheist he's a communist and he was um, on top of that he was a drunkard <laughs> and um, when when my uh, when my mom got saved and then her mom got saved they were praying for my grandpa's salvation for their dead salvation for their husband's salvation and just to just to give you an example how how hard-headed this man was and how um, how much he refused to even think about it or have anything to do with church is that at one point when he was a little bit drunk he brought an ex to the house and he tied my mom down when she was still a teenage boy uh, she's a teenage girl and he um, he threatened to kill her and when he when he told her that if you don't refuse your faith I will chop your head off and he was dead serious he was just one of those kind of men he was a very angry person and on and, and, and top of that he was drunk at that moment and she said I will not refuse and he brought an ex up to literally kill her and as my mom praying at that moment his hands froze up in the air in the middle of the air and he could he could not pull him down as hard as he tried and the battle was going for some time he was trying to so hard to bring his hands down but his hands were stiff up stiff up in the air and then when he realized that he can't do anything with himself he, be, he told my mom you pray and you tell your God so he'll release my hands and of course when my mom she she loosed herself she prayed that God will release his hands his hands got loose he dropped an axe and she ran away from home and many times he threatened her even tried drowning her one time in a severe cold winter and if you know anything about Russia Ukraine winters are pretty severe nothing but night gown he cast her out uh, out uh, out of the house on her own and that's the kind of man he was completely hard-headed man completely hard heart against anything of faith or anything of the gospel but my mom and her and her mom my grandma they continue to pray and pray for pray for this man and eventually Holy Spirit found a way to touch his heart and this person my grandpa got saved and then became a minister in the church we have to understand that there are things that we can solve by counseling by talking with people by negotiating but there are things which there are more of them they're not that we can do nothing but to pray and as 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 a leader at the church working with people sometimes you come and people come to you and they confess the things that they've done and they cry and they ask why did i do it I, I knew better not to do it you tell them you give them advice how to do it how to proceed forward and they agree to it they say yes I'm not gonna do it again and then they leave and they can't hold themselves and they continue to do what they used to do it and one thing I realized being uh, being in the ministry for many years now is that your words can do very little if they're not backed up by prayer you can talk to you can talk their year off you can give them a 12-step plan but if you don't pray if you don't wage war if you don't break that power that's hanging over them that's like pastor said that that produces desires unclean desires in their life you the people will not be able to do anything and so that's why as a church we put a huge emphasis and we're gonna page put even bigger emphasis to pray to intercede to wage war to fight for people to pray for people to pray for the salvation every person has a deep inner desire to know God but it's because the spirit behind them that blinds Apostle Paul call, says there's a veil that's over their eyes that needs to be broken and that veil can only be broken when we pray for people the thing there's are things in your life that, that, that only can be broken only through prayer in your life because you already tried discipline you already said to yourself you're not going to do it you already told yourself you promised to other people you're not going to do this or that but only through power of prayer you can overcome in Jesus mighty